So, um, over the past few years, especially over the past like year or so, I have um, been coming up with different ways of thinking about stuff and theories and whatnot. And I, I've been saying them to people, and a lot of people just don't understand. Um, and a lot of people do disagree with my theories. And then sometimes, um, especially with the ones people disagree with, later on something will happen and then I'll say, this is what I was talking about. And then the, the, the light bulb pops and they're like, oh, I see what you're saying. But they still disagree. Um, but basically, you know, some of the basic... Um, concepts that I have come up with and that ha I have um, stuck with. Um, one of them is uh, there are 8 billion people on this planet and we're all different. And no matter how you look at it, no matter how you try to try to twist it, turn it, whatever, we're all different. We have to be different. We must be different. It's required for us to be different. You, you know, pedophiles didn't sign up to be like that. They didn't say, you know, when they were born, you know, hey, I want to be like this. When they were five, they didn't decide to be like that. It, it is just how they were designed. That's how their that's how their their chem, their chemicals work in their brain. Um, they can't help it. Um, it's just it is what it is. Otherwise, we wouldn't even have the the word pedophile. And I hate to use that as an example, but it makes sense. Um, they didn't ask for that. And, you know, when I look at these people that are, you know, driving around with these big pickup trucks with um, lights all up under their vehicles and tires that are designed for the, the, the four-wheeling, but they're only driving on the road. And people make fun of them and all that. And I'm like, we've got to have those people. We have to have those people um, in our planet. There are 8 billion people. We have to have them. Think about this. Think about the, the sales alone. The, the, they're selling tires. People, They're buying tires. They're buying the light kits. And it's their expression. It's their way of expressing themselves. Or And, and on the flip side, people like me could be like, what a freaking idiot uh, to do that. And I know better than to do that. Um, but we have to have them. There are people that can't, that are just, no matter what you tell them or how you tell them to do something, they continue to do the same things. Um, and you have to have those people. You absolutely cannot exist without those people. So you can't get too upset with people they're like that you just have to swallow that pill you can try to help them um i think that's always the best thing is, is learning to be able to communicate with those people but we're all different um and 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 it, we eventually just have to accept people are who they are and we have to be thankful for who they are um and and just in a little personal thing is I prefer dating um, minority people, minority women, obviously, because they're different automatically. They're right out the gate. They're different. They're a minority. That alone, they're a woman. That even makes them a smaller minority of the world. Then learning about them and learning about their culture helps me understand people better. Maybe I can help them understand my people better. But my whole goal is for me to understand life better, to value people more, to see other sides of things. That's what it, that's what's in it for me. Um, it, it, it's heartbreaking to find out the things that I have found uh, over my, my lifetime. Um, but again, I just use that as an example because diversity, you know, sometimes we just have to appreciate and listen to other people's experiences because it could very well 
influence our decisions um, and a, a lot of things. Um, but that's just me on the, the, the minority thing. Um, but that's, that's where I always start is the, the 8 billion people. Um, the second thing that really people fight and disagree with is I believe and I want people to use me. And that sounds weird to hear because of over all of time we think of people using people and it not be, and it having a negative um, impact. But I do. I want my employer to use me to, to do work because I get paid for it. I want um, the the government to use me for taxes or for this or that. I want to be used. I want to be wanted. I want people to say, I could use that guy in this task. You know, um, Bill Gates, we use the shit out of him. We use his thoughts. We use all of his programs. We use everything that he has done. We use Bill Gates. And he's grateful for that. And I know that. But what we don't want is to be abused. Those two first letters, abused. That's where somebody takes too much, does things to you that are wrong, deceiving, uh, or deceptive, or um, anything like that. It's abused. Two totally different words. Um, it, it, it's, it's, it has a huge meaning. The more you get into thought on it, and the more you, um, you, you see the depth of being used, um, I think you will value that um, theory or comment or belief um, more because you want to be wanted. You want people to use your resources, your mind. You want that. And if you don't want that, then you're selfish and you're a know-it-all and you don't care about anybody else's success. Really, if you don't want to be used, then that's that's kind of sad but even people that don't want to be used want to be used they do it, you know if you're rich and, and famous you want to be used as the person that says i want to be like that that's your use but you bring uses in your your talents to society or to the world and that's <laughs> If you don't want to be used, then then you're really just consuming air. But you're even even consuming air. You're being used for something on this planet, whether you like it or not. You're being used by nature, by friends, by family, by people you don't know. You just don't want to be abused. That is a those are the two, those are fundamental, and I hope one day that this that theory and that that concept makes it out there to where people fully understand the difference between the two. Because I can't stand the being used thing, and, and that really that started in a conversation of networking. Um, I had a conversation with some people one night about um, I network everybody everything I do with somebody is networking and they we got into this freaking argument that networking meant a financial gain and that's not true that's not the dictionary definition of networking and they just wanted to argue and argue and argue saying that networking is all about me and it isn't networking is all about what I can do for you if I can do something for you and just keep doing things for you you'll keep using me how about that word you'll keep using me for that for that task right 
if you're if you're just get out of law school and an attorney, a law firm wants to use you because you're a, a, a phenomenal um, writer or litigator or whatever the case may be, they're using you. Hell yeah, they are. You want them to use you. So you, your networking is, is I th in my mind, is networking is the most important thing you can ever do in your life. No matter how you look at it, your network is your foundation. If you have a good network, they won't let you down. A solid network will never let you down. Will never let you drown. And the and the the beauty of that is some of us have solid networks, but they don't know how to use that said network. Now, there are to my to my research, there's two kinds of networks. There's your business network, and then there's a social network. How many times have you known somebody that knows somebody that can help you in a situation? Aren't you using that person that kn that friend that you know to get to another person? It's not you're not abusing them. You're using them as a resource. You're using them as a reference. Use. You're being used and you want that. In my opinion, I want people to use me and say, Eric, you are such a phenomenal person and you have such phenomenal resources that I want to use your resources to make my life better. And if I can do that, then my, then my network gets bigger and bigger, more solid, and then it, it just continues into this gigantic web of beauty of a network. Now, there are always people in your network that you're not crazy about. You don't have to be crazy about everybody in your network, but guess what? If you build that network properly, you can use those people in a, in a good way to help you get further in life. But in my opinion, it's not about you getting further. It's about helping people get further. If you help other people get further, they want to bring you for the ride because you've helped them so much that they just want to keep bringing you like, hey, keep coming around me. You've helped me a lot. Keep coming around me. And then what happens is as you start coming around that person, other people see the resources and the value you bring to the table. So then they want to use you too, right? Whether it's a financial gain or a um, romantic gain or whatever. Um, so that's kind of a double dip on the, the networking and being used. Um, the, the last thing that I, I want to address is over the past couple of years, mainly the past year, I have run into so many problems with building my business and it, it and the things in my life would blow your ever loving mind. And it's, it doesn't, it, it, people that witness it just can't believe it. And then they see like one instance or two, maybe three. And it is, it just doesn't make sense. It, it really doesn't. It, it's, it's happened so much that. I have to turn it into something else, into comedy. I'm a big practical joker. I'm always joking around because that's the only way that I can fathom life is by just doing out of the, the, the world stuff. Um, you know, I could give a gazillion examples, but I'll give you two quick ones. I was putting a uh, motion sensor light, a battery mo operated motion sensor light in my mother's hallway uh, so that you didn't have to turn the light on when you went down the hallway because it was always dark. And anyway, so when you enter the hallway, it would turn on and that was that. So I took the, the, the motion sensor light into the hallway and put it up on the thermostat, which is kind of in the middle and kind of in the center 
just to kind of see if it lit the hallway enough. I put it up there. A couple of my mom in there said, hey, what do you think about this? Do you think this idea will work? Just the idea. And she's like, yeah, yeah. So so I was like, okay, well, let's see if we can find another spot that may make it better, a little bit more concealed. So tried a couple other places, and they generally worked. So I went back to put the, the light back on the thermometer to kind of give it a look again. For 20 minutes, my mother and I both tried to get that damn light to balance back on that ther that thermostat and couldn't. I mean, when I went in there originally, I had the light, I put it on the thermostat, walked away, and got her, and we that was that. We, for 20 minutes, could not figure out how to get that light to go back on that damn thermostat balanced out. It would, it just, it would not balance. Kept falling. That doesn't even make sense. And I know that it's like, wow, that's kind of funny, uh, weird. That's, that is... That's just some. That, that's just one little teeny thing. Like, why? Something that small. Um, I was having an issue with an air compressor, and I put a pipe on it, and I had to use the uh, the plumber's tape or nylon tape or whatever to seal the the, <coughs> the pipe off, and it didn't work. I couldn't get the. So I needed to get it adjusted. So. Um, I couldn't get the pipe all the way off, so I had to take the whole freaking air compressor. And if that air compressor story, that's that's another one. That's another whole long story. But this is just a little teeny part of it. I took it up to the place to get them to um, take it off, try to readjust adjust it. So we started taking it off. The guy finally was able to to get to loosen the nut on it. And I had to take it out and get the um, the nylon tape off of it to reset it or whatever. If you have ever taken nylon tape off of a pipe end and it shouldn't take more than 15 seconds. If it's really in there and, you know, kind of real set in there and all that, it may take you a full minute, maybe. I am not lying about this. It literally took 25 to 30 minutes to get that one pipe end, one little teeny pipe end about that big to get that, that thread off. I'm not kidding. What? And the guy was sitting there looking at it and he couldn't believe it. He couldn't, it was shocking to him. He was like, I don't even know what to say. I was like, look, am I not doing this right? He's like, yeah. He said, you're doing better than me. And I kept trying and trying and trying, and he he just we were laughing. He was kind of laughing, like you know this is this is insane. And I'm getting frustrated, but then I start you know after about 15 minutes in it, I'm already pissed as shit that it's hot as hell outside, and I'm trying so hard to. I mean, it's just coming off in little itty bitty teeny little chunks, if it was coming off at all. And it was so hot and I was so mad. And then I was just it just got to be funny ish but as it got funny like 15 minutes in it still took another 10 minutes to get to get it off 25 to 30 minutes to get some pipe thread off some i mean it's not glued on or, or taped on it's just nylon thread it just should just peel right off you should just be able to pull it right off that doesn't even make sense like why why would it be like that? At, wh wh <laughs> you know, that was 30 minutes, 25, 30 minutes of my life sucked away on a task that should not have really taken more than 60 seconds. At most. At most 60 seconds. Half an hour. Gone. Gone. And my sanity went with it. I mean, I could just give you lists and lists and lists of shit that's happened in my life, and you wouldn't believe it. You would, you would, you would have to say he's making this up. There's no way it could be like that, but it is. And the way I deal with it, and the way I cope with it, 
is by joking around. But then I realize something more important than that is I'm lucky to have these problems. I am so lucky to have these problems. I'm blessed to have these problems. I could be in a situation where I could, where I don't have an air compressor. I mean that damn. I'm lucky to have an air compressor. I'm lucky to have something to, to use an air compressor for. I'm lucky I have a vehicle to have gotten the air compressor over there. I'm blessed for these problems. Otherwise, I could be sitting at home eating potato chips wishing I had something to do or my mind is, is blank or I'm nowhere. So I'm lucky to, in my, in, to create problems. Do you see what I'm saying? That I'm creating problems because I'm doing things. Am I doing them properly every time? Probably not. Probably most of the time I'm not doing them properly. But I'm, I, I'm, I'm able to do things. You know, I'm lucky I have hands to do that tape on that freaking air compressor. I'm lucky to have legs. You know, I'm lucky about a lot of things. And so uh, it, it's a blessing to be so frustrated all the time, to be like, God, why is this happening? Like, why? Why? Why do these things keep happening? And I promise you, and I promise you, and I know a lot of people are hopefully going to watch this one day, you'll be like, God, I have problems that happened to me too. I wish you could see mine. I wish you could. It would be, it would, it, it would be insane. Just, Every waking moment of my life is a problem, and I'm grateful for it. I love it because I'm lucky to have it. Because if I didn't have it, then that means I'm not doing anything. I'm just wasting air. So spinning in circles and being upset and simple tasks that are supposed to take 15 seconds, taking half an hour or days in some cases, um guess what? I'm lucky to have them. How about that? No matter how it, how it's shaped up to be, um, I, I'm not where I want to be in life. Um, I hope I'm never somewhere where I want to be in life. I hope I'm always go, going to be in a better spot in life. And I'm not talking about financially. I'm talking about in my soul and in my heart and the beauty of my mind. I'm lucky. And when I leave this planet, I want people, I want to know that I have affected lives that have gone way, you know, further down and further down. And I've affected people in a positive way, made life better for everybody. Not, and not to get, you know, you know, like, oh, Eric did such a great thing and let's praise him. No, it's not like that. In a way that, you know, my dream and, and this is, sounds weird, is, is I, I had a girlfriend once that her, her, her father passed away, and I went to the funeral, and there were thousands of people there. And I was like, holy cow, this guy made a real impact on his community. It was, it was insane. And I, uh, I found that out, and I'm like, man, that's what I want. I don't want to be, I don't care about being rich or even famous. I want to make I want to make a better world for people, and when I pass away, my dream is that people will uh, the a lot of people will come to my funeral for saying thanks for being a part of my life and making my life a little bit better and take up thirty minutes an hour two hours of their day to go to my funeral and and to to affect their lives that much that they that they want to pay respects to me and to and to say this man affected my life so much and did so much for the way I see things and the way that I feel things that I I want this to to show the world how much they meant to me and I want everybody to see in a big circle that you know, what they thought I was just doing for them, just that one person, that I did it for everybody. A lot of people, a whole lot of people. You're not the only one I'm doing this stuff for. Everything I do is for other people. It, I, I'm 
one of the most selfless people you will ever meet in your life. And that's a selfish statement. But I love people. I'd rather do more for the for the world than for myself. And that's what I'm here for. That's why I was placed here. Not to, to travel the world and see all the beautiful things and see what my brain and all that can 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 absorb. Because it don't matter when I die. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. What matters when I die is the is what I did to make this place better for other people. For them to go do all those beautiful things all over the world. That's what I like. That's all I care about. That really is all I care about. I would love to see all that stuff, but my life right now, I'm happy with it. It's I, I, there are a lot of things I wish I could do and wish, wish that I could be, but I'm blessed. I am, and I would never want anything different for anybody. And I'd rather do take the pain from anybody and try to do something better for this world than I'd rather sacrifice, sacrifice myself. I don't care. I don't care. I am going to die. So are you. So is everybody. So let's just be happy and make this world a better place. Really, there's, there's no other reason for living. There's no other reason for living other than to make this place a better, make this world a better place. That's true. It's really true. Doesn't matter how much money you have. Doesn't matter about anything other than the things that you did. Your your legacy. That's key. Your legacy. So, I just wanted to share these things. I wanted to get them on tape or tape or video or whatever. So that maybe one day if these thoughts, especially the, the use and abuse catches on and people actually start to see what I'm talking about, they'll see where it came from. Um, people aren't accepting it. Some people will hear it and they're like, oh, I see what you're saying. Abuse. When they see a situation where people abuse my generosity or, or whatever. Um, but anyway, I love you. Um, I hope this world becomes a better place for you. And maybe if I said something that, that changed your mind or may give you a bigger perspective, maybe you'll share that information with other people and come to my funeral. I'm kidding. Well, maybe. Anyway, be good. Talk to you soon. Blah, blah.